One of the key issues is that there's a lot of difficulty in, in estimating how much gold you actually have in a deposit. We've just talked about one part per million. Even a rich gold deposit at 30 parts per million, that's still very low levels of detection. And so as, as, uh, as an industry, we tend to struggle in accurately estimating how much gold we have in a deposit. And sometimes if we get it wrong, the company makes bonanza profits because we underestimate. And sometimes when we get it wrong, the company goes broke because there's not enough gold to support the process. And it's, it is one of the real challenges of, of the gold industry. One of the opportunities is, as I said earlier, it, it really doesn't cost you a lot to get into the gold industry depending on the type of deposit you find. You know, there's a lot of operations around where the capital investment might, not, might be less than $20 million. And that gets you a, basically a mine and a mill. And at the end of the day, you're producing a, a product that you can hold in your hand, take on an aeroplane and sell. So there's a, you know, a, lot of, a lot of niceties about what that enables you to do. Um, the infrastructure required to, to transport gold production is negligible. Many, many companies are transporting their gold on an, on an aeroplane. So it leaves the mine site and it goes on an aeroplane straight to the market, basically. Whereas think about the difference in, in what you would have to do uh, if you were transporting coal or iron ore or all of these bulk commodities. That infrastructure you need to transport your product is very, very substantial. You do have potential for theft. And there are a lot of cases where gold mines can either go broke or um, significantly um, lose their lose profits from the fact that um, people are stealing gold. And there's lots of ways to get away from that or try to reduce that. But whenever you've got a good gold deposit, you can almost be sure that some of it is being stolen. So it's a, a risk and a, a process that you have to do. And I've been to sites where it's a very tedious situation and issue in terms of the security arrangements for getting in. It's easy to get in, it's a bit more difficult getting out. You have the, the potential to capitalise on the price volatility and, I, and I, um, I'm not sure that we'll talk about a little bit more about that in, in a moment. Um, and that's there's good things about that because if you if you buy on the low if you if you build on the low end and you capitalise on, on an upswing in the price you're going to do well. If you happen to build your mine when the price was 1700 then you're struggling. So it's an issue. And the supply and demand influence on the price of gold is, is less obvious because, as we talked about earlier, a lot of the gold is being accumulated. You know, it's not just simply you, you produce gold, it's going in, it's being consumed, and you're just continuing to, to supply and demand. So the supply and demand um, logistics that, that are important in other mineral commodities are less important in gold. Some of the, the just to emphasize some of those issues, if you know this was a, an example, let's say you've got these are you're in a room, just this room here, and for example, and, and we put three drill holes in this room. And let's say um, this gentleman here is the only bit of gold in the room. No, no more gold, just that, little, that person there represents the gold. If we've drilled this with two drill holes, what's the chances of hitting that gold? If you do hit it, you're going to think you've got the absolute best gold deposit in the whole world. If you don't hit it, you just don't know. So it's one of the, the major challenges for estimating gold that we have as an industry. They're in places that you and I wouldn't want to really visit. Um, so, and it's very difficult um, uh, um, to, to actually extract gold, maybe because of regulatory reasons or political, or just dangerous, right? I mean, uh, Mark did mention a thing that affects the industry is theft. So you can get hijacked on some of those highways in Western Africa. And, um, so, so, you know, you need to see, it might be the world's best gold deposit, but it might not be the easiest to um, extract. And, you know, the, the jargon in the industry is quite significant and technical. It gets very technical. You, we only touched the surface on some of those slides. So, um, you yeah, know, it, it uh, there's a lot of jargon. And in public reports, there is a lot of jargon that's very difficult for lay people to understand. Um, so it, it isn't easy, and, and it is, it is a, it's, a tough, it's a tough decision. So if you're an individual investor with 
you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. If you're trying to look at an individual asset to invest your money in, it, it's pretty difficult. The example of the price volatility, you see here a chart for the gold price and uh, there's a, the gold price is in uh, the red colour and, and the level of volati volatility which changes. And so we went through a period in 2013 there where the volati volatility in the industry was very high. And so you've got to deal with those sorts of things. And uh, on top of that, you might just have a bit of a whim of the central banks that they want to either buy or sell. And you, if you look at the last 10 years and you look at the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth, the, the second last column, you'll see what the, the net supply and demand from the central banks has been. So we started 2003 with the central banks selling 620 tonnes of gold. Um, it started to reduce and by uh, 2009 that basically was neutral. In the last two years they've gone the opposite direction. So in that 10 year period we've gone from the central banks selling 620 tonnes of gold in a year to buying 540 tonnes of gold. That has an influence on the price. Um, and nothing really too much that we can deal with that. And there are a whole range of factors that influence gold price. You have currencies, interest rates, supply side, consumer spending, inflation, short-term investment flows, and, and um, maybe someone can tell me what systemic and tail risks are because I don't know what they are. But there's clearly some, some major influences on the gold market. I think um, gold's good in times of uncertainty and volatility, and that's definitely what we see in today's market. Um, post Lehman's definitely there was uh, there's been a lot of volatility, a lot of uncertainty, and I think going forward, um, still with some issues with the U.S. Fed. Um, obviously, Europe is still in a, uh, is, is still suffering and in, in, in a crisis. Um, slight slowdown in China, so it's a it's an uncertainty uh, point, and people see gold as a safe haven. Um, so I think um, both historically and now, it, it's a good time to invest. And I actually think the price is relatively low. I know Mark says he's got a few more grey hairs than I have, but um, uh, when, when, when he was a boy in shorts, of course, gold price was about $250 an ounce. And, and I think that's very, um, it's a very, it wasn't so long ago. Um, but I don't think we'll get back to that level.